hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today i wanted to do a continuation from last week's video and speak about how you know cam c is and how to apply for it and how to go through with doing cam c right i really hope everybody is okay and the week that has passed has been good to us you know um People ask you how you do if you go there and you say, Oh, I can't complain. I'm sure for most of us we can complain, but we're gonna choose not to today. Alright. So just like my last video and this one, they are really about the steps that I took to get into medicine. And after I finish speaking about this topic, I am not gonna come back to the process of you know um getting into medicine and um, to practice it in Jamaica, so to speak. So this is basically my last video on that. Yeah, I got some really good feedback from a friend of mine and um, she just totally went along with um, the vision that I have for this channel. And I'm gonna take that advice from her. And moving forward, we'll do some health tips videos and whatever else you'd like to see on this channel just let me know right as well as possibly have guest speakers who know um and see where it goes right but you know let's go into it so i wanted to talk today about cam c so cam c is right and that's what it stands for basically so the exam has two parts right um cam c1 cam c2 so cam c1 is basically so first of all first of all you apply to do this exam at the medical council the medical council is at ue i will put the address below um the compound of ue it's close to the med sci faculty to the medical school that's where it's close to right um medical science faculty yeah behind law yeah so behind law behind um i don't remember what a peach place name peach building car remember what name business is a business school whatever it is i left you a long time now time so i remember that but yeah um it's near to the medical school near to the gate that connects UA with the university hospital right all right moving on from there so you apply to medical phone so first of all let them know you want to do cam c right they're the person who host it they're the persons who you pay for the exam all of that the cost for the exam was the last cost was 700 us that's the cost for the exam i can pay in us or i can pay in jamaican dollars what I do know is they don't like card because I think their card machine is down and has been down for some time now. So they literally want the cash um, or that's the only way. Let me not say they want the cash. That's the only way you really can pay for it because that's the only way avenue they have. <laughs> yeah. Um, antiquated, I know, but that's what it is. Then now, but the people there are very sweet and very helpful by the medical phone. So very sweet and very helpful. Trust me um that's my experience with them first of all second of all um as it relates to cam c right so i was saying i was talking about the medical phone so let me finish off with them this is also where you um, apply for your provisional license when you practice in jamaica before you um do cam c or any other exam you need a license because you'll be practicing medicine on patients on people so you need a license it's a provisional license before you do cam c after you completed cam c you get your actual license with your number and everything right provisional license is temporary your license yeah that's gonna be your license you renew it every year and everything and that's where you always go up by the medical council fine finish with them now cam c that's what we're talking about so cam c one and two so there are two parts to the exam cam c1 is 200 questions right 200 multiple choice questions to be then people are haunting them hand on my video but anyways we digress 200 questions uh multiple choice questions that is and the exam is a six hour exam with a one hour 
if I'm not mistaken, at a half hour or one hour break in between. So you literally go to the exam center. Exam usually starts by nine, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Um, you go three hours, you get an hour break. So the first three hours you do 100 questions, of course, because it's between half. Then you get a break, then you do 100 questions after that. Fine, then you come out. Okay, that's the that's it. You wait on it till you get your um you wait until you get your results. The Cam C2 now. Cam C2, so both exams are not held on the same day or they, they're, they're not done at the same time. Like um, if I do Cam C, when I did Cam C1, I did Cam C1 in April, then I did the next Cam C exam, step two that was held that I was eligible for it was um, in November. So there was a Cam C2 exam that was held after my exam, like three weeks after, but that was for people who previously did Cam C1 um, and they were waiting for the exam to be done. Fine, so Cam C2 now, Cam C2 is a two-part exam, right? So day one, day two. So as I said, Cam C1 is a one-day exam. I don't think I said that, but it's a one-day exam, right? Um, six hours with a break in between. Cam C2 now is a two-day exam. So the first day you go and it's computer. It's all computer really because of COVID now, right? So the first part of Cam C2 it's multiple choice questions, but they are very much clinical. They're clinical questions, right? So you literally will get about eight questions, six to eight questions you'll get. Out of these six to eight questions, you will um, say, sit in front of the computer, get the first question. When you get the question, that's the one and only time you're seeing that question. You are not able to see that question again a second time. So you literally have to remember everything in that question because out of these eight questions, it's like one question has five parts. Yeah, about five, even six parts. So you have to remember what's in the first question. And then the next question is about the first question. And then the next question is asking about it. So basically they tell you um, a man has whatever whatever and then the next question say how would you treat that okay after say the person well, didn't react to treatment how would you do this so you can't you're not going to be able to go back to the first main clinical problem that they gave you so you have to remember that and that's it for the rest of them so as i said each question have five or four or six parts and you have to remember what it is so you can answer the remainder of the questions right that was a tricky part for me as related to that and then come see um, part two the second day or the second part that part now had um, situations where it was a virtual oral yeah it was oral but it was virtual so what I did they split the group of us in two groups one for the morning session one for the evening session because literally they have X amount of um, doctors that could possibly question all of us and um it was like a zoom classroom and so i was in the evening session and the morning session and the evening session get different questions so it's not a situation where the morning session could tell you what they got because trust me it's a totally different thing so when i went in the evening session you know, i went i sat in i have a room with a laptop by myself and i sat there and i signed in to the zoom i got the password and username whatever signed into my zoom and then i would wait for my turn for um my first oral room or whatever fine all right so how that happened was or how it's organized that's what i should say how it's organized is you do peds um you have a session for peds you have a session for so that's pediatrics you have a session for surgery there's a session for medicine and there's a session for obs and gynae now one of these sessions or two of these sessions can be counseling sessions and the other two sessions can just be how you would take the history and how you would treat this patient right counseling sessions meaning some sometimes patients literally go to their doctors and they have problems 
um, that they just have queries about. It's not that they are sick or anything like that. So you literally have patients who come to you and say, Doc, what do you think about this or whatever? So that's a counseling session. So a patient comes and they have diabetes and they're taking their medication, but they just have some questions and you should counsel them through it. Um, how to give them clarity on whatever question they have based on their illness and all of that. Um, so yeah, that is what it is. The last part of the exam lasted maybe the second day lasted by like two hours but as i said it's morning session and evening session so if because i'm in the evening session i was there from morning waiting right um actually they told us what time our session would begin so i wasn't there from the morning but i knew what time to come i think my session was starting at one so i came from like after 12 after 11 and just was there revising with some people and stuff like that so yeah for me no just my experience with CAMC God was good to me because in my opinion I did CAMC both parts on the worst rotations ever when I say worst um, the busiest the most demanding right and those were Obzangaini and pediatrics and um, I did the first CAMC part one in April as I said and the CAMC part two in October November Feel like it's november i don't think it's october or november yeah anyways my only the only drawback i saw with cam c was the fact that the price is very high not only drawback more than one so the price is very high and then secondly from the price being high right literally you have to be <laughs> Every minute you have to be calling them. When is the exam being hosted? Um, is the exam being hosted today, tomorrow, next year? Like you literally don't know until three weeks before, one month before the exam is being hosted. So if you know you're going to study for PCMC, start study from now. Don't wait until you hear the exam um, is being hosted. And secondly, for... For CAMC part one, I didn't use this girl, but for CAMC part two, there's a girl named Blossom, a doctor, I'm not saying girl, sorry, a doctor named Blossom. She is Nigerian and I'm not, I don't remember her name, her other name, her last name right now, so I'm not going to mess it up. Um, but Dr. Blossom hosted a class where she went through a lot of scenarios with patients and stuff like that for CAMC part two for me. and she had a hundred percent passing and i'll only suggest somebody if i've used it to them and i've seen that their work is legit and good and i use her and i passed and there was nothing that she went through or did that i personally couldn't have that i didn't get so yeah she was awesome trust and believe so i'm gonna put that below and as i said it was god because it was just rough i was on peds for my last rotation for my last come see part two it was very rough for me and i must say hmm, only god i depend on him all the time and i see him come through for me all the time and if he doesn't come through i know that's not the right path so yeah um i leave that with you i hope that those you know locum interns or those who have studied abroad who are coming on the scene to do their camp exam i hope they find this helpful right if you can do the exam before you start internship do it if um do it within internship as well that's very important because you want to be able to matriculate into sho right another thing as well i was grateful to god that i could have done cam c part one and two during internship and matriculated right after some people don't have that luxury because of how rough internship is for them and i must say big of all the students who came from all the interns who studied at ukraine for example in ukraine with me because everybody went and passed it on the first go everybody who have done who has done that exam those ahead of me those you know who have done it after me um everybody had passed the camc exam on the first go so i commend them as well as my prayers go out to all those students who are in ukraine about 42 jamaican students currently and not only jamaicans but other countries who are currently you know being caught in the middle of um the russia and the ukraine war and what's happening there and the turmoil i really hope it doesn't affect you and i really hope if you realize it's going to that you can be able to leave safely 
and as well as i know you want to complete your studies because it's hard to be in third or fourth year knowing you have two more years left and then you know you have to abandon it because of war or whatever turmoil may be there whatever unrest so when i was in ukraine we had unrest too it was crazy but we we um god worked it out and we came out fine so i really hope the same thing happens for you i really hope you know they're just shaking it up but nothing really happens per se and that you guys can finish your studies because i truly understand that struggle yep so again be encouraged have a good one i'll see you next week remember no matter what position you are in no matter what you're doing put god first all right bye have a good one